Hi, my name's Pip. I'm one of the physios at Sydney Advanced Physiotherapy in Linfield, and welcome to our Sunday Sessions series of videos. In these videos, we hope to help you understand a little bit more about your body and to answer the questions that we often get when we're in the clinic. Today's video is on breast cancer and the ways in which physio can actually help women who are recovering from a breast cancer diagnosis and the treatment involved with that. So as many of you will know, a breast cancer diagnosis comes with treatment. So it comes with lumpectomies, mastectomies, it can come with chemo, it can come with radio. Everybody's treatment is a little bit different depending on the type of cancer that they've had. The first change that we tend to see in people is that there is a change to the way you breathe. And this often happens as a result of the obvious emotional trauma of a cancer diagnosis, but it can also happen as a result of the pain you experience after surgery. And it's a very subtle change. It's a change that not a lot of people pick up. So what actually happens is instead of breathing deeply down in your lower rib cage, people start to become um, more neck and shoulder breathers. And you take more than 20,000 breaths per day. And if you imagine your bicep and you were in the gym doing bicep curls, if you did 20,000 bicep curls, your arm would be very, very tired the next day. And if you did it every day, then you would find that that bicep was constantly tight. If your neck and shoulder muscles are over participating in breathing and they're doing that 20,000 times plus per day, multiple days, weeks, months, years in a row, then you can start to see chronic neck pain, shoulder pain and persistent tightness that you can't get rid of. So physios can actually then step in and teach you how to breathe again properly and to release some tight areas, tight joints, tight muscles that might be stopping you from doing so. So ideally physio steps in as early as possible um, after breast cancer treatment to try and stop these breathing changes becoming a set pattern in your body. The reason for this is not just related to muscle aches and pains and neck pain. Um, when you have more of a neck and chest and shoulder breathing pattern as opposed to a uh, more normal breathing pattern, what tends to happen is you have a higher carbon dioxide level, you have more acidic blood because of that, and that tends to make your pain receptors a little bit more sensitive. We also see that when people have abnormal breathing patterns, their uh, nervous system can be more wound up. Uh, their pelvic floor can then have problems. They can have ongoing issues with fatigue and mental function. So this can obviously affect you when you're trying to return to work, for example. But the message here should be that uh, the way you breathe is a really underrated, uh, very important factor that can impact your recovery after a breast cancer diagnosis, and it is something that should be addressed very early on. Now, unfortunately, uh, sometimes people experience pain as part of their journey following a breast cancer diagnosis, and it is important to note that the way you breathe can um, create a bit of a vicious cycle with your pain. So as I said, you're, if you're breathing uh, more shallowly because you're breathing more with your neck and your chest and your shoulders, then what happens is your pain receptors become more sensitive and then because you have more pain, you take even more shallow breaths, which spirals up that vicious cycle. Physios can also help a lot with scar tissue. There is very, very important that we try and uh, get that scar tissue to heal as well as possible. It is really important that you try and get the scar tissue to be as mobile as possible. I know that that doesn't sound very appealing, but you want your scar to not be adhered to whatever is underneath it. Just like with anything, so if you tore a muscle in your calf, you want that scar tissue to not be a weak point for your body that can re-tear. It's not quite the same with a surgical scar, but the scar tissue can then have really negative effects on, for example, your collarbone's ability to rotate and therefore your ability to lift your own arm without overloading certain other structures. So it is really important to make sure that you see a physio for scar tissue management if you've had any sort of surgical intervention. If you've had a mastectomy, this is particularly important. Obviously there is pain associated with that. And so we need to address the scar tissue and the breathing, but we also need to make sure we restore normal shoulder uh, motion and also rib cage rotation. These things are really important, not only for self care, but also for sleep and to help you return to whatever exercise level you were at prior to your diagnosis. In terms of lymphatic flow, proper rib cage motion, so the ability to rotate and your ribs to move well as you do so, uh, that really very, very directly affects your lymphatic flow. So the stiffer you are in your upper back and mid back, the more likely you are to start to see a buildup of um, 
lymphedema in your arms, particularly if you have had uh, lymph node dissection, so you've had lymph nodes removed. So it's really, really, really important that you have um, ideal mechanics through your rib cage and that we minimize any stiffness in your back so that your body is best able to drain those fluids out of your arm and flush them out. So the thing you might not know that physios do for um, patients who are going through breast cancer treatment is we can help with fatigue. So it is really, really important to have a very structured and specific exercise program to do this. Uh, you need to know how far to push without pushing you too far to the point that you're exhausted then. And graded and regular exercise is a very, 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 very important part of the recovery process and of managing that fatigue. So this one I can actually speak from personal experience with this one. So I had thyroid cancer and I was absolutely exhausted after it and slept all the time and anytime I did something I felt shattered again. Um, and I set myself up with a very graded um, exercise program and I just pushed a little bit more every so often and I found that quite quickly my fatigue levels started to come around. I have also worked with a lot of breast cancer patients and have used exercise to help them manage their fatigue as well. Finding physios that have experienced treating patients that have had a breast cancer diagnosis and treatment associated with that can be a little bit difficult. So obviously, if you can't come in to see us because you're not in the local area, there are some groups that you should know about. So out of New Zealand, there is um, a training program called Pink and Steel. So steel is more related to men's cancers and pink is more related to women's cancers. And there are physios who have done the training. So if you look at our website, you'll see that I'm a pink trained physio. Um, if you look at other people's website, you might see that they're a steel trained physio. And so that way you can find out if um, they've had some additional training in this area. You can also um, go to the pink and steel websites and have a look and see if there are any physios in your area. I would say that there are also physios who haven't gone through this training process, but who have clinically lots and lots and lots of experience treating breast cancer. Uh, the reason I actually did the pink training was because I saw breast cancer patients all the time and I wanted to be able to make my training sort of essentially more um, official. Um, so just keep in mind that there are physios who might not have done that training who are very, very experienced and very much able to help you along the way. I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch. If you are experiencing treatment as a result of a breast cancer diagnosis, I hope you are feeling much, much better very soon and I'm wishing you all the best on your recovery journey.